It's my great honor to welcome Tyler Strafaci to Augusta for the first time. Uh, Tyler won the 2020 U.S. Amateur, and that's an achievement he shares with the founder of this club, Bobby Jones. And he also shares this achievement with other Georgia Tech golfers, which is rather remarkable. Matt Kuchar, a good many years ago, but most recently with his teammate and close friend, Andy Ogletree. So we've had two Georgia Tech golfers win two years in a row, the U.S. Amateur. Tyler, there must be something special about the Georgia Tech golf program. Um, did um, uh, Andy give you uh, any advice? Yeah, so uh, Andy was one of my close friends in college. Um, lived with him for three years. Uh, was, we had a great time during those years and just just being kids and having fun. Um, so when he qualified for the Masters a couple years, or last year, uh, he had a great tournament, had a lot of fun, played with Tiger Woods, kind of our idols growing up. So it was, it's a little different situation than I'm in this year, but I still got the defending champion, Dustin Johnson. He's one of my idols, too. He's a great player. Uh, but he just had a great week, um, had a lot of fun, enjoyed the moment. And he texted me last night pretty much saying, just enjoy the week. This is just a very special tournament. Um, this will be my only time playing in the Masters as an amateur, so I'm going to use every bit of it. And just I'm just going to be 22 years old and just have a good time. Well, you've got another rather remarkable link to Augusta National and the Masters. Your grandfather played in at least two Masters uh, in 1938 and 1950. So this has got to be very special for your family. Tell us a little bit about that history and your perspective on following in the footsteps of your grandfather. Yeah, so I, uh, I never got to meet my grandfather, um, but he's been a very integral part of my life. Um, he, he was a huge part in how I was raised, how my father raised me. Uh, he, my grandfather came from nothing. He came from Italy, um, his family did, and just came from nothing. He built a great career, became a great amateur golfer, played in two Masters, won the Pub Links, was finished ninth in the U.S. Open. Um, so he, he had a quite the unbelievable career, coming from no money and kind of work. He was very inspirational. Um, so just just being in the Masters and playing the tournament that he did, it's a dream come true. It, it brings me closer to him. Um, I would love to meet him, but as my father says, he would have much rather me playing the Masters than him. And it just shows shows how great of a person he is because my father really believes that, and it's really cool. Tyler, a lot of young people, of course, are watching great golfers like you and making decisions about their own athletic career and also their, their lives. And uh, you not only won the U.S. Amateur, but uh, you were academic All-American at Georgia Tech for two years. And I am told by your great golf coach that you won the, the Bobby Dodd Most Outstanding Student Athlete in the whole school with all the athletes uh, being measured. And you won that at Georgia Tech. So. If you were giving advice to young people, and I must also add me, because it took me 40 years to get a degree at Georgia Tech, and it was honorary when I finally got it. <laughs> uh, so I, I need some advice on that, too. What do, you, what do you advise young people in terms of the uh, academic side, playing golf, uh, spending all the time practicing and playing, and then also doing so well in school at a very tough school? Yeah, so it was tough. I uh, I was academically gifted in high school to where I really didn't have to work very hard um, to get decent grades, and I got by. And I'm competitive. I, I got pretty much straight A's in high school, and it was never a big deal for me to work harder because I got A's, and I didn't really have to do anything much better to kind of fulfill my goals. I came to college a freshman, partied a little too hard, um, and I got a 2.8, and I was kind of – I was really frustrated, just I, I didn't want to go to college and just go through, go through the motions, get B's and C's. I wanted to be the best at, best academically I could. Um, and Hepler, uh, Hepler sat me down in his office after I 
struggled my freshman year and said, you have a great opportunity to do something special at Georgia Tech. You could be a Byron Nelson winner. You could win the Bobby Dodd Award. And he's like, I genuinely feel like that's the direction for you. Um, so the next two years, I didn't make anything less than an A. Uh, changed my life. I got into a great relationship with a girl who I'm still dating now and just got more structured. And to me, being academic All-American is as important as any other golf accomplishment I've had because I really worked hard and I changed my life lifestyle to do that. Um, but at, the advice I would give someone is it's going to be tough. Um, you're going to go to college. You're going to have a lot of distractions. You're going to have to grow up. But there's no reason why you can't go out, work hard, and get good grades. And that should be that should be one of your main focuses in school because getting that degree and getting those good grades is going to set you up later in life. Thank you. I'm sure a lot of young people will be interested in that. So let's let's go to the room. Brentley. Hey, Ty, uh, your grandfather had a pretty interesting debut here. Can you just tell some details of that story and also talk about your reaction when you first heard the details of that debut? <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a weird one. Um, he qualified for the 38 Masters from I think it was either the winning the pub links or finishing ninth in the U.S. Open. And he he got invited to the Masters. He came. He played the first round. Um, and in order for him to make the Walker Cup team, he felt like he had to go and defend his title at the North-South. So we actually withdrew after the first or second round at the Masters and went to go play in the North-South, which he won. Um, and it just shows how different the tournament has changed over the years where my grandfather actually withdrew from the Masters to play in the tournament, other than the Masters. So if I did that, I don't think I'd ever be invited back. I think it'd be <laughs> – so it's it's changed a lot. So it's it's cool to see how it's gone through history and just the prestige of the event. Um, but, yeah, that's – I was very shocked when I understood the reasoning why I withdrew. Colin, and then I'll get Timothy next. Hey, so, Tyler, um, I know you didn't get the chance to meet your grandfather, but what does it mean to have your father out there and, you know, walk the, the, the whole course with you? Yeah, so uh, my father ended up having an opportunity to play with me last week out here with one of the members, Michael Murr, and that was probably as cool of an experience as I'll ever have in my life. Um, just that connection with my grandfather walking the same grounds he did was cool for him because he heard stories growing up from my grandfather playing Augusta. So just just being out there, um, and he's he's been there. Every, he's gonna be my instructor for the week. So he's kind of fall. I mean, he is. He works on my swing, and he's he was kind of my first golf coach. But yeah, just having him out there, I need his I need his support and need him there for me because it's me a it's me a nerve wracking week. Just kind of being in an uncomfortable situation, um, and I'm looking forward to it. And if he wasn't here, it'd be a tough tough time for me. But I'm glad he's here to be by my side, and we're going to have fun. Timothy? I have two right here in front of you. Two questions, if I may. I'm curious if, the, if your family has any artifacts or any good luck charms from your, from your grandfather's appearances at, at Augusta that may have inspired you along the way. And then secondly, you alluded to it that your roommate played with Tiger, and of course you're going to play with DJ. Um, how do you prepare yourself for what – just the amount of patrons, what those roars, all of that. How do you prepare yourself for what that's going to be like? Yeah, so the the, fir Sorry. the first one, um, yeah, we have a very cool artifact from my grandfather. Uh, it's his contestant badge, I think in 1950. It's this big, big uh, bronze medal with the clubhouse, and it says contestant on it. It's very similar to the badge that members get that they have in their bags. Uh, and that's been in my dad's office. He, he hasn't let me touch it pretty much my whole life. Uh, but I've, I've gone there and touched it a few times. It's, it's really cool uh, just, just seeing that part of history in his office and kind of where he came from. That, that just shows how important that golf tournament was to him. Um, but the second part, yeah, there's, there's no preparing for that. I'm, I'm just going to go out, have fun, uh, be a kid, go make some fist pumps, make some birdies, and just enjoy the moment. I mean... This is 
this has already been the coolest experience of my life, just leading up to this tournament. I don't know how it can get better. I'm sure it's going to get better, but it's going to be so fun. I'm just hoping to make contact with that ball on the first tee and then just go compete. But, uh, yeah, it's, I'm, I went up to DJ yesterday and just introduced myself. He's a very nice guy, very welcoming. And that was important for me to do. So I get in the first tee and I kind of know him a little bit. Um, I didn't want to. My dad was like, you, you probably should go introduce yourself. And I was like, okay. Um, but, yeah, it's going to be fun. A lot of people, I'm sure it's going to be a different environment than I've ever been in. But I'm gonna do, I feel like I'm going to do really well. Um, once I get past that first tee shot, I'm sure I'm going to hit it pretty good. But once I get first, past that first tee shot, I'm just going to go compete. Scott? Tyler, I understand that uh, basically last uh, March you had kind of made the decision that you were, were going to probably turn pro after last uh, college season, before everything shut down like a week or so later. Uh, can you think about just all the things that have now come your way in this year uh, that you might not have uh, gotten to do had your normal plans gone, gone ahead and, and it happened without a pandemic? Yeah, so I remember very distinctly, it, it was, I think it was right after our Las Vegas golf term in college, we found out that our season was canceled. Um, and immediately then it was just heartbreaking for everyone on the team. And we, we didn't really know what the future held because we had, we just had in our minds that we were going to win national championship la last year. And we really felt like we had a good shot. So after that, it kind of turned to, do I turn pro? Do I wait? Do I come back for kind of the PGA Tour U and kind of use it that way? Um, but kind of came to the conclusion that I was going to come back to school and kind of do stuff and had a really good summer and didn't kind of, I didn't really expect to win that. I, in the back of my mind, I wanted to win the AM, but kind of you can't really plan on that. So once that kind of happened, I, it was a tough decision I had to make to not go back to school. Um, and I know Coach Heffler and Georgia Tech understood my decision because I, I needed to put myself in uncomfortable situations and just kind of learn from the experiences and get better from it. So it was, it was, it's a lot's been thrown out my way, but I, I think I made the, I know I've made the right decision. I'm turning pro coming up. Okay, uh, I got Steve next. Yeah. Hey, Tyler. Uh, how you doing? Um, Two-part question. First part, uh, talking to your dad, I don't know if I, I got the story exactly right, but coming out of high school before you got to Tech, did you have a chance to, to come over here and you were, had to be kind of convinced to come? And that, I think you were saying you didn't want to come until you actually played the places. Is that true? That is true. So I never wanted to come to the Masters until I played in the golf tournament. So when I committed to Georgia Tech, it was, I think it was the – Tuesday before the Masters in my sophomore year in high school. And I went to I went to the dinner and I told Hepler I was gonna to come to Georgia Tech. And my dad mentioned that they were him and my brother were going to the Masters to go watch. And Hepler asked, Are you going to the Masters? I said, No. Um, I'm gonna wait till I play in the golf tournament. And Hepler pretty much said, That's probably the stupidest thing I ever heard, because you're gonna be playing it four times. Uh, He's like, are you going to stay back and not play? I'm like, I guess I'll go. So we uh, we had a very, very fun time after I committed. And that was my first trip to Augusta. And it was good that I went because I kind of got to see everything that was going on and kind of what to expect. So that's that was a very cool day just being with him and my brother. You've To follow that up, you've, you've come to realize that was a good decision. But... Uh, what is your familiarity with this place, do you think? And uh, because you ha you've had some chance to play out here. Yeah. yeah, so being a part of Georgia Tech, just that familiarity with Bobby Jones and Augusta and Eastlake and all that stuff. So you kind of, you know what Augusta National is like, just the history of it. But we played, I think I played two times in four years. I couldn't make a couple of trips because I was back home playing a tournament. Um, but just being there and kind of getting used to the place, it was plays different in January when it's 35 degrees and raining. Um, but just coming out, I think my first round was with Luke Schneider James and Andy Ogletree, and we had a great time. Just didn't care what we shot. We were just asking questions, having fun, hitting shots. So that, that was a pretty cool experience. And just leading up to the term, I think I've played close to 10 rounds of golf. Um, 
courses change every single time I come, it gets firmer and faster. So it's, it's kind of cool because I came the last four weekends before the tournament. So I've kind of acclimated myself a little bit, but the greens are kind of getting firmer. So it's, I got some more prep over the next few days to feel comfortable. I got James and then John. Hey, Tyler. Uh, so you said that you played here about a week ago, um, and or a couple weeks ago, you're here with your dad. I'm wondering who else was sort of on your mind as you were walking around the uh, around the grounds. Just, just our family. I mean, it was it's pretty cool. Kind of just the whole Strafach family is an American dream. Just where where my grandfather and my grandmother and even my parents on or my grandparents, my mother's side, just kind of. No one, none of them were born in were born in the U.S. So it's just kind of it's just, it was cool, just to kind of be there, and just see where we all came from, and have my father with me walking down the fairways was, it was very emotional. Uh, we were we were pretty much walking arm in arm the whole time, just kind of sharing experiences, talking about what the week was gonna be like. It's it's an experience I hope I have with my son or daughter one day. John. Thanks, Sam. Uh, Tyler, just curious, you know, hard enough coming here and playing and, you know, as an amateur in this event, playing with the defending champion, but with with your grandfather, with your dad, with Andy and the Georgia Tech connection, I mean, how do you manage all of that and, and how much heavier is the burden, you know, coming here and playing with all those other things going on? It's, it's you know, it's one thing to be a U.S. amateur champion and, and coming here and playing, but you've got all these other sort of side stories here that make it a really robust experience. I'm, curious how that feels and how you how you manage that yeah I mean it's just it's just a cool part of it I don't think it's adding any pressure any distractions it's just it's just cool to be just cool to be here um, again I'm gonna have fun and all that all that stuff about my grandfather and Andy playing it's it just makes the experience way cool and I'm glad they did and it's probably gonna make my experience way easier here because I've learned so much about it through Andy and people that played in the past Okay, uh, Joe. Thank you, uh, Tyler. Uh, you know, back to your grandfather. You know, being the director of golf at Doral, um, can you share maybe a couple of the stories that have been passed down in your family about some of the folks he interacted with uh, in that position? I know there's there's one about what picking up Jack Nicholas at the airport. Yeah. So my grandfather in Miami during the '50s through this probably middle '70s was a celebrity in Miami. He. Uh, Doral used to be a celebrity event, so he would he would kind of help help all those guys out, help them get situated and all that stuff. But he was close. One of the coolest things he was very close friends with Babe Zaharias. Um, just she's an icon in golf, and just some of the stories I've heard from my father passed down uh, with their relationship. And he was he was friends with Arnold Palmer. Just just playing him in that match in the U.S. Amateur. Jack Nicklaus, he knew pretty well. So just all those iconic figures, and also DiMaggio and Mano, like there's pictures in my dad's office of him, like, hugging and whatever with all those guys and holding my father when he was a little baby. And it's, it was pre it's always pretty cool going to my dad's office and seeing all these pictures. Got one written question here. Uh, what has been the best advice you've received in preparation for this year's Masters? You mentioned Andy, but anything else comes to mind? Go have fun. There's, I mean, that's pretty much all it is. I'm not gonna be. I'm I'm competing for the love of the game this week, which is great. I'm an amateur. That's that's the great thing about the Masters. Me, Joe Long, and Ollie. We're gonna we're gonna have a great opportunity to just compete and have fun with nothing to lose. Um, it's probably gonna be the last time that's gonna happen for quite some time, other than the Walker Cup, where it's just for the purity and love of the game. Um, so I'm I'm really looking forward to that. Okay, I think we got two more questions. I've got Scott. Uh, uh, Tyler, I understand maybe you you tweaked something out at the Genesis earlier this year at Riviera. How healthy are you now? I know you played at Seminole and the Georgia Cup. Are you ready uh, for this week? And also, what are some of the other amateur traditions that maybe you're looking forward to uh, this week? Yeah, so I, uh, during the first round of the Genesis, I, I hurt my, I displaced a few ribs in my back, which I've played through before, but the main injury was I sprained my SC joint, which is pretty much collarbone and sternum right where they meet. 
and it was it was hurt a lot. I couldn't really extend probably more than a couple feet past the ball, and I really couldn't hit the ball very far. So it's right now it feels good. I've been having kind of a pitch count. I haven't really hit many balls over the last two months, maybe 20, 30 balls a day for the last two or three weeks. Um, but I'm hitting it really good. I, I feel healthy. My mind's clear. So there's no excuses for playing bad golf this week. I mean, I'm, I've put all my work in. I fully expect to go out and compete. So there, there should be no injury concern this week at all. And the amateur things like the crow's nest and stuff like that? So I'm staying in the crow's nest tonight. Uh, that's, that's something I dreamt of since I was a little kid. Uh, just the whole appeal of being an amateur and staying there. It's, I, I've had a picture in, of the crow's nest in my room since I was probably 10 years old. Um, so that's, I probably won't sleep much tonight just because I'm probably going to be hanging out, watching Masters reruns and just just enjoying the moment, being a kid and uh, hopefully have a few drinks tonight and just, just enjoy the moment. I believe this is probably the last question we've got. Uh, Tyler, you, you, you're obviously playing here as your granddad did twice, but as the board there indicated, you're also doing something that he did not get the chance to do. How rewarding uh, is it for you to be on the Walker Cup team that he did not get a chance to play on? Yeah, that, that was one of my grandfather's goals and kind of his biggest letdowns of his life that he didn't make the Walker Cup team. Whether he deserved to make it or not, um, that's in the history. That's in history, but to have the opportunity to rep the – the United States and the Walker Cup is pretty cool. Unbelievably cool. I, it's not pretty cool. It's awesome. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to that. And that will be a great send-off into professional golf and just just have fun with teams and get friendships and try to win that thing. Okay. Thank you very much. And, Tyler, uh, good luck to you. Go Jackets. Yes, sir.